Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, welcome Hallelujah. once again to Believers and God this evening. Um, thank you, Brother Mike, for that session of um, praise and prayer. And just before we go into the word tonight, I want us to just have a, um, a quick um, prayer to bow our head. Our Father, we want to thank you because you are our God, because you are never tired of reaching out to our heart and speaking to us, communicating to us your will, because you want us to be perfect, you want us to be entire, you want us to not lack in any area, you want us to come up higher, you want, you want us to possess the fullness of you so that we can represent you well in this world and so that also we can be fit by your mercy for the home above. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. And even as we go into your word now, I pray that as soon as you have prayed before, you will speak you know, your word just using my mouth as 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 a me as a medium to communicate your mind to every one of us tonight. In the name of Jesus, give us hearing ears, give us a listening, a, a understanding heart, and the will to obey you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So um, tonight we are looking at the message titled "Just um, Obey," just obey, and the, our opening um, text is found in the book of Exodus, chapter nineteen, verse five. Let's, if you have your Bible there, hard copy or your phone, you can open to the scriptures. Exodus chapter nineteen, verse um, five. I read, now therefore. If ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6 And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children. Of Israel, I just read from the King James Version, Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Here we see God, you know, um, this was when the children of Israel just nearly came out of the land of Egypt, and God, you know, put Moses over them as their prophet, as their leader to lead them to the promised land. And then God was you know, giving Moses instructions, telling him how to, what to tell the children of Israel, you know, what to do, what not to do. And here, God was instructing Moses you know, that he should tell the children of Israel that if they obey his voice, if they obey his commandment and the things that he's telling them that and they keep his covenant that they shall that we make them a peculiar people unto himself. He will choose them for himself. Not just that, yes, there are these people are you know you want to wonder why is God saying we make them a peculiar people unto himself again, even after he had promised their forefathers that um, he has chosen him and that through him he will raise the nation and that through him the nations of the world would be blessed. Why is God now saying that he's going to choose them again as a peculiar trio unto himself? He said that um, at times the, the, the promise does not automatically um, just um, get transferred like that because depending on the, on the, on the, on the agreement or the disagreement of the parties involved, that can bring about the fulfillment of the promise of God. If God has said something and the person God has said it is not in agreement with God and says, okay, God, I don't, I'm not interested or begins to do the things that are against the terms and conditions of that promises, the person is jettisoning what um, God wants to do, throwing it away. And God is not bound in that situation to force his will on anybody or to, 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 be, to be faithful to what he also has said. So although God had not told their forefathers, he had told Abraham, he had told Isaac, he had told um, Jacob, Israel, that he has chosen them, his seed will be this, will be that. But they also have their own part to play as people of the covenant. They also have to keep to the terms of the covenant. And here, the condition is that they should obey God. No God have a set of no laws and rules. They are there in the Old Testament. And they what God says to do, not to do when you get to where you are going, this and that, different kind of laws. So that if they obey him, then he also is, is constrained to be true to what he had told them, to be true to what, to, 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 to be committed to his promises, no on to them and so today we are we can just apply the scripture to ourselves because the scripture says these things 
they are no longer written for them because those generations have passed. They are written for us now upon whom are come the end of the world. That if we too will be the peculiar people of God, that our prosecutor was referring to in the first Peter chapter 2 verse 9, if we will be holy nation unto God, if we will be the peculiar people unto God, if we will be the royal priesthood, if, we go, if God will, will choose us, you know, because the whole world belongs to God, but if we will be special to God, if we have special dealings with him, you know, we have a special place in his heart, then this word is also to us that we obey you know, the Lord our God. I just pray that the grace for us to really obey God will give unto us in Jesus' name. Because uh, obedience is not something that just, um, it's easier said than done. And there are a lot of times that we have a lot of wrestlings going on within us. No, um, should I do this? Should I do that? Maybe at times I'm not even sure it is God that is speaking to you. And then there are times you just want to know the logistics you know, and all the figures and the calculation and everything. They have the full picture so that you will, be, you will look rational and then you know that yes, I'm on the right path, I'm doing what I'm doing. But it doesn't always work that way. We don't we are not um given the privilege of knowing all the details, of knowing all the logistics at once, you no, know, before we can trust and obey God. And it that is why it requires faith to be able to trust to, to obey God and to follow Him. Because when we trace the scriptures from uh, Genesis to Revelation. People that God raised and used, people who receive the promises of God and have the promises fulfilled, right from you know, Adam down the line, they don't all have um, um, the, 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 the the complete picture. You know, I was I was I was talking to my husband earlier. I was saying perhaps if um, Adam. If Adam had all the pictures, perhaps if God had told him, because the Bible says God knows the end from the beginning. So perhaps if God had told Adam that, uh, okay, come here, look, um, there will be a time they say the spiritual being called Satan will disguise in the form of serpent. You come and deceive your wife. You will, um, you will, you people will eat the fruit and you will fall and you will, you will screw, you will almost screw the whole of humanity. Perhaps Adam would, would be um, ready, would, have, you know, would guard himself and then be prepared know for what was going to happen but he didn't have the overall picture so you come to Noah God just told Noah okay build an ark he didn't tell him for how long this the the the, the, the floor was going to last then we come to Abraham the great father of faith God just told him okay pack your stuff leave where you are now and go to where I will show you he didn't have the full picture and uh no those men and women like that they have they have they, it's like that they have obeyed God or they have disobeyed and almost screw things up, or they have obeyed God as they take one step of obedience, you know, God unfold uh, 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 his plans further, and they continued on another, on, on the same path of obedience, and God opened his plan further, and at the end of their life, it all came together, and I'm sure they were happy for that, thank God that they obeyed the Lord. So, even though we, 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 it is not given unto us to also have all the pictures, you know, at one, God will just give us that grace, to be able to trust him enough to obey everything he says to us in Jesus' name. When you um, look at the obedience, you know, it's a, obedience is a positive word, but it doesn't always sound like it. It doesn't always look you know, like it. There are many times that obedience, especially in the, in the, in the world that celebrates independence, and you hear the self-made man, the self-made woman, and the self-reliance, self-sufficiency. The word obedience really connotes um, a burden that many are not willing to bear. And uh, it could also connote a weakness, dependence, you know, and surrender. And then you could hear, why, why do I have to listen to you? You are not my parent. Why do I have to do what you say? Who do you think you are? What credibility do you have? And you know, it's easy to say those things to fellow men because you are trying to be independent and to be ourselves. But even though we don't usually say it out that way to God, but a lot of times that's how many people act. That is what many people are saying through their actions. Because if you got to, to obey somebody, you must actually be um, surrendered, be yielded to the person for you to obey the person, especially when they are telling you uh, things that, that don't add up. So it takes uh, you letting go of your will, of your plan to be able to obey someone and do what they are asking you to do. It takes you recognizing someone as a higher authority over you to listen like children to parents. 
or like um teacher to student. So if you don't if you don't recognize that person, if you don't acknowledge that person's authority over you, find it hard to obey them. So you or, or you just outrightly, you know, you just outrightly rebel. And because in, this, in today's world, we don't like that feeling of being controlled. So we also rebel against God. And uh, uh, it's not just in the big things only. Because it is easy for us, like God says, do not commit adultery, for instance. And then uh, you are a child of God. You fear the Lord. You want to love the Lord. So you don't want to hurt God. And also at the end of your life, you want to make heaven. So if you so you, you can easily know... Um, avoid uh, adultery, fornication, stealing, and all those big, big things. But in those little, little things that God, you know, the Spirit of God nudges you about, that God instructs you, and you are sure that this is the voice of God that is speaking to me, it's, uh, it's not so easy to, to, to obey God in things that seem so trivial. Yet, um, the devil can really play on our unwillingness or our insensitivity because uh, we are thinking this one is not it's just little, doesn't matter, it's common sense should tell you, you know, all those kind of stuff to so really cheat us because we find it hard to uh, find it harder to obey God even in the little things than in the obvious things and in the glaring things. So take for uh, take um um for uh, for example, when God instructs you like do not post your pictures on social media again. Or shut down your social media and do so, so, so number of days and just um, lie low, be in my presence. Or maybe just, just, or maybe just ordinary, just get off social media, you know, for some time. Or maybe you just want to, you want to celebrate an achievement. God has done something, want to celebrate it. And then it would be nice if you really do. And then God says, just let it pass. If you feel... It feels ridiculous, and uh, if you share with people who don't see the same way with you, don't have the same conviction, with you don't have the same level of fellowship with God, with you like you, you know, as you do, it's it it, it really sounds like uh, uh it's almost like you are a fanatic that uh, you are taking things to the, you know, to the extreme, and then. By yourself also within you, a lot of wrestling will be happening, a lot of wrestling will be going on. Uh, should I do this? But this is not sinful. It's not bad. It, 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 it's not a big deal. I mean, what's there in this thing? It's, it's, such, it's just an endless, no, of stuff. But God is saying, do not do it, do not do that. And a, a lot of times we just find it hard to, you know, to, to obey. It may be a clothes, maybe a dress that you bought and then it's very nice. You didn't steal it. You worked for your money and you bought it. And God said, no, you are not wearing that clothes. Or oh, um, you want to go for an occasion. It may be there. It will be a nice thing. And God says, no, um, you are not going to go, you know, for that occasion. And even when people don't say it, they just see you as odd. They see you as awkward. You see, you as you are taking this thing too far, it's not this hard. You are becoming a, a fanatic, and there may be times they don't even want to associate with you so that your fanaticism will not rub off on them. You know, it can be it can be that it can be that um I'm serious, although those those, those matters are, are a little thing. And I'm using this example because they, they they seem so trivial, they seem so so small, but they are they, they, they are real issues. They are practical things that uh, we all can relate to. They are relatable to every one of us. And perhaps um um <laughs> maybe as I'm talking, perhaps you you find yourself being guilty, you no, know, many times, you no, know, uh, or uh, on on many counts, you are guilty on many counts, you no, know, some of these things that God tells us. God tells us to do or not to do. We are getting of disobedience, you no know, outright rebellion against God. And sometimes we just we just don't um, we just don't care. We just don't we just don't want to know. We just want to go ahead straight and do what you want to do. After I will sort it out with God. And at times we just want our own will to prevail and want God to bless it. And I mean it's so. It's it it it's disheartening, you know, and even for believers that after we have successfully um have, have our way, our permissive will, we still come and celebrate God as the doer of it. 
and then you no, know, we, we 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 still want God to still take responsibility for that sin, despite the fact that it is not His perfect will for us, you no, know, to do that and that we went ahead. And no, uh, uh, sometimes we we are trying to 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 wait to to see. Okay, let me consider it, and then there's just so much struggle going on between you. Should I obey? Should I not obey? Is it really bad? I can't I saw this later, and then eventually you get so overwhelmed and. You succumb to self. And like I said earlier, you know, the Satan preys upon these uh, little, little uh, seemingly and um, trivial things to cheat us, to rob us you know, of the things that God wants to do. When each time we disobey God like that, you know, uh, uh, there's so much that, uh, that, that we are missing you know, when we disobey God like that, and that is just the goal of the enemy to just get us to be in this alignment with God and to miss out on all He has for you, on all He has for me. And it is um rather 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 unfortunate, but I pray that you no know, to us from today that we'll pay more attention and we'll be more willing, we'll be more yielded to obey God, so that the enemy does not always have a loophole to rob us of the presence and of the grace and of the blessings of God in Jesus' name. So, and uh, this, when we talk about um, this uh, issue of obedience, disobedience, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's, it is worse when, uh, as a child of God, you think that, okay, let me just do it now. I will sort it out with God later. I know how God speaks to me. I know how we settle issues. Or it just be like, Okay, after all, I am, I am, I am, I am serving in God's kingdom, so my service will cover for me, so that God can be bribed. You know, my service will cover for me. I am serving. I am, I am giving my offerings. I am paying my tithe. So I mean, everything is going to just uh, uh, work out. Or maybe worse still is that our hearts have become so insensitive to the knowledge of the Spirit of God. And that this can be a worse state to be in because once we have become so insensitive to the, to, to, to the knowledge of the Spirit of God, then we can easily slide in and out of disobedience at free will and not even, not even knowing that we are actually disobeying. Because, you know, it, it, it could get to that stage and it could be that, you know, that our hearts have been hardened from years of disobedience from years of repetitive disobedience that you just don't think you just don't know anymore <laughs> when you are even disobeying god you just do your things you become like a natural man again like someone who has not even tasted of the grace of god like someone who, who, who has not even been hearing the word of god and, and, and hearing the knowledge of the spirit of god and then you, you, you just you, know, you just do things and just and, and and the devil is happy so after all you're just serving god and don't even pay attention to this issue uh um anymore and uh um to buttress that let us look at uh, the scripture in first samuel someone like that is in the bible that he has he has gotten so accustomed to disobeying god and uh, just feel like just sacrificing you no know, to god will be enough to just let the matter slide like that and to to carry God's favor back in his life. Let us look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. It is a popular you know, scripture right from children's church. They used to you know, tell us this scripture. Most of us might be able to say it you know, off the top of our head. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Maybe someone would like to read for us. I don't want to call a name. Is there anyone who's willing to read for us? Samuel 15 22 and Samuel said as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken that the fat of rams thank you so much sir so um th this scripture just aptly captures it and there's no there's no strange there's no um hidden uh, meaning to it it's just as simple and as straightforward as it's uh, as it as 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 it was read, you know that we cannot be living in disobedience and thinking that you know uh, we can just please God by sacrifice. In, uh, in the book of Isaiah, I think also in the book of Hosea, you know God was um, telling the children of Israel there in the book of Isaiah that I am the one who made um all these animals. I am not hungry, 
If I'm hungry, I can easily get one of food. Okay, so I'm not just asking you for sacrifice. Your sacrifices are, they are not pleasing to me. They are not acceptable. This is what and what I am asking of you. And it should be in your best interest to obey. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But you can't just keep sacrificing and fasting. You know, your fast, your, your holy days, your, your, this, your tabernacle, your everything. They are not doing it unto me if you are not obeying my word. And why? Because here in the, in the scripture we just read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, it says, God does not have as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. It says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking than the fat of rams. It's not as if uh, God, does, God does not regard our sacrifice, but there is, uh, there, there, there is priority. There is a, uh, there is a, uh, there's, uh, there's, um, di there are different levels of importance. When you choose, to choose between your obedience and your sacrifice to God, what comes first and foremost is your obedience to God. If obedience is out of the matter, you cannot be disobeying God, you know, whether in big matters or in little issues, and then just think that God is so, is so hungry for your money, he's so hungry for your singing because there's nobody else that can sing in the whole wide world. There's nobody else that can give offering. There's nobody else that can do what you are doing. So God is so hungry. God is so, God is, God is so needy. That you can do whatever you want and slide with it. Just, just, just serve him. Just serve in the church, and you'll be fine. No, so God, no, God would, God would rather that you obey him, you obey his, his voice, you obey his word, and leave the sacrifice apart. Rather than bring the sacrifice and then disobeying him. I pray that God will give us the grace to obey him and to set our priorities right. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to see uh, what obedience, you know, uh, what, 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 what it does you know, in our life, what it does for us, what it is to us. Um, let's look at Exodus chapter 19. That's uh, our opening scripture. Let us go back there. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Is that blessing? Can you please read for us? Any version you have is good. Are you there? Okay, is that the solar? Can you read for us, please? Now, therefore, if, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel thank you very much um also let's read from the book of john chapter 15 verse 14 gospel of john chapter 15 verse 14 if you are there you can read Still trying to open. John chapter 15, verse 14. I read. It says, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. So, one thing we want to note here is that obedience is a mark of God's children. It's a mark of true discipleship that we are these true disciples that we belong to him. Obedience gives us that mark. It sets us apart. As we read from that Exodus, it says that if you obey me, if you obey my voice indeed, another, another, um, um, another translation says, if you obey my voice faithfully or diligently and we keep my covenant completely, that you will be a peculiar people unto me. Somebody that is so dear to God that God has chosen. Is 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 not is not is not just the general the generality of everybody, the generality of people. So obedience marks us apart as God's own children, as God's 
own people. No, eh, 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 um, there is a place in the scripture that says that their mark is not the mark of my children. But if you obey God, then it marks us as his children and as you know, true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It sets us apart. God deals with, with, with us on, on another level. Rather from the generality of people who just do whatever they feel it is good. Like uh, in the book of Judges, in those days, there were no judges in Israel. So everybody does whatever is right in their eyes. And rightness and wrongness is relative to, to whatever it is that you want to call it. But as believers, we know that right and wrong is not relative. It is absolute based on the word of God. If we actually accept this word of God. And so when we obey the word of God, as it tells them to us, whether the ones we read in the Bible or the ones we hear you know, uh, in, in meetings like this, when we go to the presence of God in church, in fellowships like this, or when, it, when we are uh, uh, having the one-on-one -on -one communication with God and the Spirit is ministering to your heart and your dream, when you're reading the scriptures and meditating, or when you just do anything, God just is telling you something, stop that thing, do it that thing, don't do that one, come here, go there, that's kind of thing, and then we obey. Then we are, no, that's yes, we are the children of God. Um, also, obedience, my two things is that obedience is the proof of our love to him. Obedience is the proof of our love to him you no know, beyond the one we we profess you know, there's uh, there's a song we used to sing father we declare that we love you we declare everlasting love for you but you know, beyond that one that we profess in our mouth beyond the one we say when we are singing when we are praying or we talk to people about or we convince ourselves about you no know, obi our obedience is actually the proof that really we love the Lord. Let us read the scripture here and see uh, what we are talking about in Second John chapter one verse six. Second John actually has just a chapter. Second John that's after the epistle of Apostle Peter. Yes, you're looking for it. You're using a copy like me. Second John chapter one. Verse 6. It's a blessing if you are there. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Thank you very much. And we're also going to read from the Gospel of John. Uh, I think we um not the one we read before. John chapter 14. The one we read before is John 15, 14. Let's go back to the book of John. This time around, we're reading from chapter 14 verse 15 John 14 15 okay I'll read if you love me keep my um, commandments if you love me keep my commandments and then you join it together with that one we just um, read it says this is love that we walk after his commandments this is love that will walk after his commandment. So beyond our singing, beyond we come to church, we come to the place of prayer. You know, our daily life of obedience is the actual proof that really, you know, we love him. When you love someone, you obey them. You are, you, you are, you are accepting of the authority over you. You obey them. You no, know, uh, because here, you no, know, the, 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 the obedience here being the proof of our love to him is, 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 is talking of beyond the words in the doing. He says that when you do my commandment, you keep my commandment, then you love me. When you, when you walk after my commandment, then you, it means that you love me. When you keep my commandment, it means that you love me. So the obedience is actually in the doing. It's not just in the hearing of the commandment. It's not just in the singing of it. In our tongue, you know, the Bible was, was saying to Prophet Isaiah when he was sending the children of Israel that uh, that that these people they 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 honor me with their tongues, but their heart is far from me. Obedience is a thing of the heart. If your heart is not yielded, if your heart is not convinced to do the will of God, then you can't you can't really um do that action, carry that action 
of obedience. And to obey God is not just in the theory. That's not what God is wanting. It's not just in the singing. It's not in the talking like I'm, you know, preaching it now. Or it's not in the thinking of it. Oh, I wish I could obey God. I, wish, I really want to obey. It's not in the thoughts, you no, know, that is in your heart. It is in the doing. It is, it is, it is how you show that, yes, I truly, truly love the Lord. And the third thing is that obedience is also how you actually show, show that you believe God, that you trust him, and that you are accepting of his leadership, of his rulership, of his ownership, of his wisdom, and his guidance. His leadership is that he is your head. He's ahead of you. He's the one leading you and you are following him. So if you are not accepting of God's leadership, then you can't obey him. If you are not accepting of his rulership, that he is the ruler of the world and is the ruler over your life, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done, then you can't obey him. And if you don't know that he's actually the one who owns you and holds the breath in your nostrils and at the snap of his finger can take it away, you can't obey the Lord. And you can, if you don't believe, if you don't do that, God is all wise, all knowing, he sees the things you don't see, has all the details you don't have, he knows what you don't know. If you're not accepting of his wisdom, you can't obey him. And if you won't let him guide you step by step, my daughter, do it this way, my son, hold on a little bit. If you are not accepting of his guidance, you can't obey God. And it's just also that it's just a proof that you don't you don't you don't you don't believe him. He that comes to God must believe that God is, that is able indeed to guide you aright, and that when you stay in his path, he will diligently reward you for diligently following him. So you say obedience is it marks us you no know, apart as children of God and as true disciples. It is a proof that we love him, and it is how we show that we actually believe and trust God, we trust his wisdom. We trust his guidance, we believe he exists, and we are accepting of his leadership, of his rulership, of his ownership, above what we can see and perceive around us, above the glaring fact that are contradictory to the, the seemingly foolish things that God is telling you to do, and above the expectations of the world. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, obedience um, brings and keeps us in alignment with God. Let us read in Romans chapter 5 verse 19. Let us open to the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 19. Brother Mike, can please read for us again. Thank you. Romans chapter 5, Romans 5, 5 verse 19. Um, it says, for us by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Thank you so much. Uh, this scripture was, uh, Apostle Paul was talking to the Roman believers here and he was referring to the, um, the disobedience of the first Adam and the obedience of the last Adam. And we knew no, uh, without missing words, um, without taking um, extra, uh, extra time, we knew what one man's disobedience uh, us humanity till date and then we knew what the obedience of jesus christ also did for humanity till this day we hear jesus christ always say that uh, as i hear of my father i speak i don't speak of my own we hear him say i do the will of my father you not know, telling the father that you are doing the will of your father the devil say i am doing the will of my father above because i am from above and know what is there he says i don't do anything i think i can of my own self do nothing so as my father you no know, speaks to me wants me to do that is what i do so we see how the alignment of jesus christ with god you know in obedience here how the uh, uh obedience of jesus christ to god uh, shows alignment with the plan of redemption and how we are, you know, we are enjoying that, that that grace called salvation today that was brought about by his obedience. And how we see that how the disobedience of Adam to God brought him out of alignment with God's plan, with God's uh, uh with God's with God's purpose and what is caused us. So you no, know, as you are as as you are there in that your workplace, in that your school, in that your family. You no, know, it will be not just only in your own interest, but in the interest of as many as God has attached to you, to your destiny, to obey him, 
so that you don't screw things up and you don't screw lives up. Like Adam almost screwed the whole of humanity. But thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who came and aligned with God and submitted to God and obeyed God. And then we can, you know, we can be here today reading the scriptures and talking of Christ and enjoying the grace that he has brought us. So obedience, it brings us into alignment and it keeps us in alignment with God. Remember, Amos 3 says, can two work together except they are, they are in agreement, except they are aligned, except they, 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 they are on the same page. So our obedience keeps us on the same page with God and with his purposes. And then also, um, uh, obedience brings um, blessing or you can say it brings happiness let us read from luke chapter 11 verse 28 luke chapter 11 verse 28 luke 11 verse 28 um reads but he said that jesus but he said yea rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Jesus is the one talking here. He, was, he has just preached a message and then somebody shouted from the crowd, blessed is the womb that gave birth to you. Blessed is the breast that you suck. And Jesus Christ is saying, rather than just the womb being blessed and the breast being blessed, blessed are they that hear the word of God. So another translation of, of this verse is happy. And when you, do the, when you, when you, when you have done the will of God, you have no business with the condemnation that the devil brings. With the sense of guilt, he wants to use to overwhelm you and further ostracize you, you know, from God, <laughs> from God. But when you obey him, you feel fulfilled, you feel free because you are in sync with God and your life is filled with his joy and you are blessed when you obey him. And that's our opening, opening test when we, when, when we read. It is, when we read, it is a blessing for God to call you unto himself, to make you a peculiar person unto himself. If we read from, um, you can just notice that, if we read from um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 1 to 13, he said, if you will do this, my commandment that I have told you, if you will keep my laws, and I will bless you, you will be blessed when you sleep, you blessed when you wake up, when you sit down, when you stand up, when you go and you come in. So all those blessings, they are conditional upon no upon our obedience to God. So when we obey God, we can be sure that yes, our lives will be blessed because God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Before we round up, now we cannot talk of obedience without the opposite disobedience. You know, it 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 it, it, it comes no naturally. So if obedience will bring you into God's blessings, if it will bring in alignment with Him, if it will mark you out. As his, uh, as his own, as his children, you can be sure that naturally disobedience just does just, just, uh, uh, just, um, you know, the opposite. When you disobey God, it brings you into disfavor with God. You no, know? but the faithfulness of God and the fulfillment of his words to you is conditional upon your obedience. Let's quickly read from Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, and see this uh, uh, round up very, very soon. Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, and I will read just because of uh, If you are there, you can just save us time and read for us. Joshua chapter 5, verse 6. The scripture says, um, For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of, uh, of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed. Why? Say, because they obeyed not the voice of of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore to their fathers that he would give us, a land that fled with milk and honey. If you remember, during the introductory part of the message, I was saying, but the Father God was committed to Abraham and he has given him that promise and it has transferred to Isaac, transferred to Jacob. So because those people kept themselves in obedience and in alignment with God, and even when they made mistakes, they found their way back to God. And God was also bound to be committed unto them. No, in his in his covenant, but this ones now, the Bible said, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, so they were you no, know, they were packed aside, they were removed from inheriting that promise that God has sworn unto their fathers. So, when you, so that, that that is what disobedience caused, because it it brings us into disfavor with God, and then God cannot, God is not bound to be faithful to His word to us if we are not faithful on our own part to him. 
Also, disobedience leads to failure and disappointment. If you read uh, because of uh, time, we won't read the scripture. We'll just say no, the, 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 when Jesus Christ uh, finished teaching in Matthew chapter 7, no, you know, from chapter five, we are teaching on, the, on the, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. Then in chapter seven, in verse twenty-six and twenty-seven, it says, "Anyone that hears this saying of mine and does not do them, it's like someone who built his house on a sand, and then the wind blows, and then the storm comes, and then all the things the person has ever worked for, the hard work, the labor, the effort, the everything just wasted, you know, like that. So when we disobey God and not do what He wants us to do, you know, that that is what it eventually leads to failure, disappointment, you no, know, in the end. I pray that we will not live a life of failure, we will not live a life of disappointment in Jesus' name. So, but if we really enjoy you no know, the blessings of God, if we continue to be in His hands, if we continue to see His blessing then you have to align ourselves with him in obedience. Don't use that language that he forbids you from using. Then when he says to keep quiet, to keep quiet. When he says stop eating that food, you stop eating that food. When he said do this thing, then go that way, then you do it. And you will begin to see that God, God's commitment also to you, you know, in everything that you do. But it is in your obedience to God lies your all round security. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. As we round up, there's this popular hymn, and I, would just, I just want to, as I was preparing, and just God just ministered it to my heart. I just want to reiterate it. Um, and I just, just, just some select verses from the standards. It says, my, when God speaks to you, my brother, my sister, it is true. Once you are sure that it is God that is speaking to you, just know that it is, just know that it is true because God is not a man that he should lie. And you just have one duty, one response, it is to obey. And if you are in the Savior's hand, if you are his, if you are, if you are, if you are his daughter, if you are his son, you have to do as he commands. There is no other gospel way. Never put a message by, never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. And though the way you may not see, once Christ is calling you to follow him, your faith in him, your faith in his wisdom, and your sense of responsibility to your God, both of them will cry that you should just obey God. I pray that as we go into this new week, in our day-to-day -day lives, in our family, in our respective roles and duties, God will give us to the grace to obey him in everything he tells us in Jesus' name. Let us close our eyes and talk to God. I don't know if God has, 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 has communicated to you this evening. I don't know if God has spoken to your heart. I don't know if you have been guilty of some of the things that, that God has been telling you about. I don't know if the Holy Spirit you know, convicted you of anything or just, you know, just talk to God and that God does if, if you have been living disobedience, because I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry, I've been living disobedience, I've been having my own way, I've been having it my own way, and I've been being unnecessary hardship to myself, I've been silencing the voice of the Holy Spirit because I, 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 I don't even know anymore if I'm even walking in the midst of disobedience because I've, I've, I've been so used to it that God will forgive you and that God will give you the grace to be obedient to him henceforth in Jesus' name. And if you are here, you can't talk of the, 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 the unbeliever has nothing to do with, with, with obedience because it is the nature of the fallen man to walk in this alignment, to walk contrary to the will of God. But if you want to have a turn around today, if you want to, to repent today of all those disobedient way, you know, of, 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 the, of the disobedient life that you have been living, and you want to turn to God, you want to begin to obey Him, you want to become His child indeed, I just want you to just you know, say this prayer after me. It is good that you have acknowledged your fault, but you shouldn't just end here. You have to take it a step further by committing yourself to God and just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for opening my eyes to your word once again. Thank you for sending this word to me. I acknowledge my fault, I acknowledge my mistakes, acknowledge my sins of disobedience, and I'm sorry I've been walking contrary to you, giving the enemy unnecessary room to manipulate my life. Lord, today I return to you. I repent and I ask, Lord, that you accept me and give me the grace to go and walk in obedience to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just Lord, we thank you once again your word and i pray that indeed beyond what 
I, you have been able to use this human vessel to say that to walk upon my heart, the speaker, and the heart of every one of us that have heard this word, and to give us grace day to day, that when this word, when it is time for this word to be tested in our own very lives, that will not be found wanting, that will not fall apart like a pack of cards, that will not fall cheaply, that will not continue to give the room, to give the enemy room, to manipulate our lives and to destroy our relationship with you and to rob us of the things you want to do in us and through us in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive grace even as we go into this week to walk in obedience and to be blessed thereby. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.